Hello, welcome to the Segment Routing and the OSPF Link State Database Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After successfully completing this learning byte, you will be able to analyze segment routing information that is stored in an OSPF Link State Database. In segment routing, nodes, adjacencies between nodes, and IP prefixes advertised by nodes are assigned values called segment ID values. This information is communicated throughout an area using an IGP, such as ISIS or OSPF. And so all of the routers in an area can communicate segment routing information. So the purpose of this learning byte is I want you to be able to look at a network and then look at a link state database and, and view that information for yourself. So the, co the command we're going to use, operational mode command on a Genos device, show OSPF database. The segment routing information is communicated as opaque link state advertisements. So we're going to filter the OSPF database and just focus in on the opaque area LSAs. Uh, and a detail or an extensive switch at the end of that command is what you'll need. Detail works for us in this learning byte, but extensive might give you a little bit more information. So either one of those will work. The network I'll use for the example is a six node network. These are six VMX routers. They're running Junos version 19. Now there are, please look at this diagram. This will help you understand what's going on. I have VMX one. This is the router I'll connect to in a minute. And we're gonna use VMX one's interface to look at the link state database. We have VMX two on the other side of this diagram. And in between, we have VMX3, 4, 5, and 6. All of these, all six of these routers are in the same OSPF area. These are the node SIDs, SIDs, for segment routing that have been configured. VMX1 is 101. VMX2 is 102, right? The loopback interfaces for VMX1 end in 1, 2, three, four. So I've tried to make the numbers kind of match. And, and when you're learning segment routing, you'll want a, a, a network where you know what you're expecting to see, right? So I'm going to connect to VMX1. Now here's the peculiarity here. Everybody's running OSPF. All the adjacencies are up. All of the routers have the traffic engineering extensions enabled. So we'll, we'll see that data in the link state database. And all of them have segment routing enabled in the OSPF routing protocol except for VMX1. The reason I did that, I just wanted you to see some contrast, right? I'm going to show you the segment routing information that's present for all of the nodes that have segment routing enabled, and we'll be able to compare that to the information that VMX1 is communicating to its other peers in this segment routing domain, right? So let me connect to VMX1 now and let's get started. Okay, here's our VMX1 node. I have a secure shell connection in there. I'm going to run a simple show OSPF database. And I want to filter. I want to look at okay, area LSAs. And again, remember, we need a detail uh, or an extensive switch at the end of that. So, so let's see there. Now, the first thing I'm going to see, um, I'll see all of the router LSAs. And remember, there are six routers uh, present in our environment and this this middle column right this is the advertising router so this is uh, vmx1 vmx2 vmx3 4 5 and 6 on down on the line so those are the six routers present in this ospf area right and then so after that we move down to send the node link state advertisements now we move down to each node advertising the links that it has ospf enabled on and these routers have the traffic engineering option enabled for OSPF. So not only the links and the connected peers and the connected networks on those links, but also information such as maximum bandwidth, available bandwidth, reservable bandwidth, link colors, right? Things that can be used by external SDN controllers, like a North Star controller, for example, as constraints to configure how a label switch path should be provisioned on a network, right? And so I'm going to kind of go through this. This isn't really the focus of this learning byte, but I just wanted you to see the information that, that is communicated using these opaque area link state advertisements. And again, there's six routers in here. 
in this network. Uh, each one of them has at least two links. Some of them have four links. And so there's a lot of uh, traffic engineering information about the link that's communicated. So let's step through that. And then we want to get down a little further in the database. Maybe I went a little too far there. We'll, it, with these opaque area LSAs, the routers that support segment routing in OSPF are communicating information about themselves. Here's VMX2, for example, in the link state database. Here is the segment routing global block information. The segment routing global block is used uh, uh, to generate SIDs, segment IDs. We're going to see it used in this example. Juniper platforms use this segment routing global block start label as the beginning of the available SIDs that can be assigned. And Juno's platforms will use that for the node SID. I'll show you that information. This device has been configured to support a range of 4,000 labels. It's a very common practice in a segment routing domain to have all of the routers use those a common range of labels. And that's just for sanity's sake, right? It's not a requirement, but it just helps your network make sense. And so, again, I don't see VMX1 here, right? Because it doesn't have segment routing enabled, right? It has OSPF enabled. It has traffic engineering extensions. So it's present in that information. It has, it's, it's in the same area. It has the segment routing information in its link state database, but it doesn't have segment routing enabled, so it doesn't use this information at all, right? So I just wanted to show you some contrast. So here's VMX2, you know, VMX3, just announcing their capabilities. What label ranges do I support? You know, VMX4 and then five. And now let's go back to VMX2 and what are we seeing here? Right, this is an extended prefix LSA, and what each node is doing here's VMX2 is in segment routing, each node gets a unique IP, you know, four in this case, uh, index value. This uniquely identifies this node in this segment routing domain. That's going to be unique for each router. You know, VMX3, I, I configured it to use 103, right? I just tried to make the numbers match. That value, that index value, and the segment routing global block start number, or if you scroll back in the video, 800,000, those numbers are combined and are used to generate the node SIDs in this segment routing domain. So for example, VMX, get highlighted for you, VMX3 here uses 800,000 and then adds 103 to that number. So 800,103 in this segment routing domain would be the node SID that's used to identify VMX3. 800,102 would be the node SID that can be placed into an MPLS header that could be used to forward traffic to VMX2. So again, this information is all communicated automatically using the IGP, OSPF in this case, without the need to have something like RSVP or LDP enabled. We'll use this type of information to generate MPLS labels. So each node, again, let me, let me go through this information. You'll see VMX5. VMX6, and then now we begin to look at adjacencies, and this is where you'll see some contrast. Here is where the routers advertise their links, their connected neighbors, right? And, and in the segment routing world, here's VMX1, right? It's advertising that, hey, I have a connection to VMX4. You know, I have a link that's connected to this network. My IP address on that link is this, right? And, and, and so I have an adjacency, I have a neighbor there, but VMX1 again doesn't have segment routing enabled. So what VMX1 does not do is generate an adjacency SID, put it in the link state database and communicate that to its neighbors. It, it, it doesn't support segment routing, but VMX2 does, right? And VMX2 has a connection to VMX5. It has an adjacency with VMX5. It's, its IP address that it uses to establish that adjacency is, is that right there. And here is the adjacency SID that is used uh, or is assigned for this neighbor. So if VMX2 received an MPLS frame and the top of the label stack was 1,102, it would strip that off, forward it out this link, to VMX5, right? This is how segment routing works, and this is where this information comes from. 
So those are the adjacency SIDs. So we've seen the node SIDs, the adjacency SIDs, the router prefix SIDs. So every link, every OSPF adjacency will have its own adjacency SID. MPLS will use that adjacency SID as the MPLS label. Here's our good friend, you know, VMX1 announcing another link, a connection to VMX3, but no segment routing support, whereas our good friend VMX3 does, right? So that's just an example with the show OSPF database, either detailed or extensive, how you can see in a segment routing domain, uh, in an OSPF segment routing domain, uh, the segment routing global block, the label ranges, the node SIDs, the adjacency SIDs, and use that information to map out your network and understand how segment routing works in your environment. In this learning bite, we analyzed segment routing information that's stored in an OSPF link state database. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence and the training community from forums to social media join the discussion